But first, did Biden get China over the line on a climate change deal with China by agreeing to take his foot off the pedal on the origins of COVID-19? This was perhaps the most surprising moment of the climate summit. The two biggest emitters, America and China, came to an in-principle climate agreement. It says that both sides will work to achieve the 1.5 degree temperature goal set out in the 2015 Paris Agreement. But China has regularly linked achieving progress on climate talks with America to getting the US and the international community to back down on other issues, like its human rights violations in Xinjiang. It's a point China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi made in September after meeting with America's climate envoy, John Kerry. Xinhua reported of those talks. Wang pointed out that the US side has described climate change cooperation as an oasis of China-US relationship. However, if the oasis is all surrounded by deserts, then sooner or later, the oasis will be desertified. So that's the Chinese state media's report of the Chinese foreign minister's approach to getting that climate change deal done with John Kerry. So in order to get this climate deal with China, we need to know whether the Biden administration has agreed to go easy on human rights abuses or go easy on the demand that China cooperate with an investigation into the origins of COVID-19. I mean, climate change, of course, is important, but so is getting justice for 5 million people who have died. We need to know the priorities here. It's unlikely now that the US will be putting too much pressure on China in these areas, although we'll know shortly Biden is having a virtual talk with President Xi Jinping on Monday. And it's worth remembering that not even the Biden administration is cooperating with attempts to subpoena Anthony Fauci, Anthony Fauci or Peter Daszak over what they know about the research that was being undertaken at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Here's what Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers told me when I did a congressional briefing just this week, hosted by White Coat Waste. We've reached a place where we are going to need, we're, we're, we'll have to issue subpoenas. Congress has the authority to issue subpoenas to individuals to come and testify in front of Congress. It, it is controlled by who's in the majority. And right now, the Democrats are in the majority in the House of Representatives. So for a committee like Energy and Commerce Committee to issue those subpoenas, it will take bipartisan support to do so. So it ultimately needs the support of the Biden administration and, and Biden has repeatedly pledged transparency on this issue, but it, it doesn't seem like they are doing everything in order to get the answers. And she went on to say that the Democrats have not come to the table to support a bipartisan investigation, a bipartisan congressional inquiry into the origins of COVID-19. Extraordinary. Joining me now, Executive Director of the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, Peter Jennings. Peter, thank you for your time tonight. Knowing Hi, how Sarah. China operates as you do, are you concerned that in, in order to get China to the table on climate talks, uh, the US might have taken the pressure off Beijing in other areas, like the origins of COVID-19 or like human rights abuses? There's a real risk of that, Shari, and I think we need to be conscious of it. Uh, and it's not just what's happened up until now. China can also use making progress with the agreement on climate uh, as, as a way of forcing America to make concessions in other areas. I, I read that agreement again today, Shari, and what, what I'm struck with there is a very common Chinese tactic, which is to say whenever you see precise commitment to do something, it's the Americans making that commitment. And in the case of China, all you have is promises to make best endeavours. Uh, it reminds me, in fact, of the free trade agreement uh, that we signed with China uh, a few years ago. Now, almost exactly the same approach. So it keeps America on the hook. And if Biden and John Kerry want to deliver on climate, it certainly gives uh, China a pressure point to say, well, let's not talk about human rights or let's not talk about the origins of COVID uh, if you want to make progress on climate. I, I think, um, frankly, uh, the US is being played a little bit, such as their desperation to deliver outcomes on climate. 
from what you've seen of how John Kerry operates, do you think he would be willing to put this issue, th these climate talks, above the other issues, which are so important, not just for justice, not just for human rights, but, but also for national security as well? I think John Kerry would, Shari. I, I, he was questioned recently over uh, human rights abuses in China and his response to that was simply to say, well, that's not my lane. I'm here to look after climate issues. So I think Kerry is going to be very single-minded. I, I have a little more confidence in Joe Biden on this, actually, uh, because Biden has had a lot of experience of dealing with Xi Jinping. He was America's prime negotiator with Xi Jinping when Barack Obama was president. And Biden has had the experience of seeing Xi Jinping actually make commitments to the United States about not militarising the South China Sea and cranking back spying on American industry uh, in 2015, when Xi Jinping, frankly, had no intention of doing either of those things. And Biden came out of that experience bruised. So I'm, I'm hoping that the president is going to be a bit more sceptical uh, and act as a bit of a, a break on some of yes. John Kerry's enthusiasms. Well on that point, Biden and Xi are having a, a virtual meeting on Monday US time. What do you expect will be the main uh, priorities for that phone call? And, and also, does it concern you that America is now having a dialogue with China when Australia is not? And, you know, Australia can't even get any foreign ministers in China to return phone calls. It, look, in terms of priorities, I, I would expect Biden to be setting out the, the, the sort of range of American concerns, and not, not just talking about the upside of the climate agreement. But, you know, an area which is hardly getting any media attention at all, Shari, is, is the enormous speed with which China is building its nuclear weapons capability. There was a Pentagon report this week saying that China will have 700 deliverable nuclear weapons by 2027. Uh, and Biden needs to be raising those sorts of issues with Xi Jinping. Um, it's important that the two talk together, and frankly, it's more important that America and China are talking precisely over issues like making sure they don't underestimate each other or, or uh, mistake each other's intentions on things like nuclear weapons. I'm, I'm reasonably content that there's no conversation with Australia right now because I think if there was, we would simply be being berated for doing everything wrong in the relationship. And, and frankly, we've had enough of that Absolutely. type of use. Definitely. So what Australia needs is to stick to its own strategic interests. And, and if the phone call's not ringing, well, you know, China loses as much from that as, as we do. Yes. Peter, uh, the Defence Minister, Peter Dutton, made some remarks in the News Corp papers on Taiwan uh, today, and he mm. indicated... Oh, sorry, that was in The Weekend Australian in an interview with Troy Bramston, and he indicated that Australia would support any US defence of Taiwan should China force a reunification. But, of course, this is predicated on the US intervening, and that, that's the big question. Do you think Biden would step in to defend Taiwan? Yes, by and large, I think Taiwan is going to be America's red line in the Indo-Pacific region, and, and it, it needs to be that way. Uh, Shari, I was appalled, as you might have been also this week, to hear Paul Keating say that the defence of Taiwan, a democracy of 23 million people, just doesn't matter. Um, as though Keating assumes that others mightn't be saying the same thing about Australia, a, a democracy of 25 million people. So it matters profoundly to Australia. Uh, and if America chooses to intervene, which is what I would expect um, against a Chinese attack on Taiwan, uh, we can expect very quickly... Uh, to be rung up by Joe Biden to say, hey, what's Australia going to do? And I completely agree with Peter Dutton. We, we will need to take that seriously. We won't have an option at that to, to say, oh, look, we're going to sit this one out, uh, United States. That's just not going to fly. So I think Dutton's uh, comments are realistic uh, and basically set out what America's expectations will be of us. But it's also fundamentally in our interests to protect other democracies because that's quite what we would like to see happen towards us. So smart. Thank you very much for your time, Peter Jennings. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Sharon.